Hello everyone, so yesterday on the subreddit, Squad announced that Kerbal Space Program is getting its first patch in its DLC. And because I'm in the media group, uh, that means I can sometimes get access to early builds of new snapshots. And, uh, and this this time I, I do those well. So as you can see in Steam, we can right click and we have this quality assurance beta that we can enable and launch the game. We can explore some of the new features that uh, Squad have added. They've told me that uh, they've kind of re overhauled the UI in the uh, the ship builder. They've actually changed some of the fundamental mechanics of building rockets as well. And there's been a graphics update as well. So I'm very excited to try this out. So here we are on the main menu, of course. Things look pretty similar at the moment. Uh, let's just uh, start a new game. So we can just hit start. We'll do sandbox mode for the sake of, you know, this is just a showcase of what's new in the update. So, uh, yep, we can launch that. And, oh, wow. So, as you can see, this looks completely different now. They've kind of gone for a very sort of, I don't know, sort of retro-y Lego-like uh, perspective. Kind of looks like another game. Um, it's that game that's really popular. Uh, mine, mine, Minesweeper, that's it. It looks a bit like Minesweeper, this game. So uh, let's just build a rocket, take a look at this new UI, and um, let's click on the vehicle assembly building. Okay, so here we are in the vehicle assembly building. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a similar setup, but I can really see what they meant when they said they've changed the graphics. I'm not quite sure if I like this or not. Uh, they did say that this particular build is more suited if you use a special texture pack. I'm not quite sure what that means, but uh, we're just going to keep it vanilla for now. So let's go ahead and press build. Oh. So that is very interesting. So I've now actually just been dropped into uh, onto the ground. And as you can see, oh, so this must be the new UI they were talking about. That's very interesting. So this is how you build rockets now. I've just had to double check the wiki just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. So what we have to do now is we, we go anywhere and we right click to build this, a NASA workbench. Which looks very interesting, definitely looks different to the old way of building rockets. And I think now what you do is you right click and here we are, this is the actual rocket building screen. So again, they've gone for a much more streamlined minimalist feel by the looks of things. So we're going to go ahead and build our rockets, we're going to start with our nose cone at the top. We'll add a uh, engine to the bottom, I believe this is the new look for the mainsail. And then what we do is we kind of build the rocket like this. You see, you kind of draw it using the plates. So it's almost like procedural fuel tanks this time. We have now actually have the ability to kind of construct uh, fuel tanks like this. Although, obviously, we only have that one size available to us. Again, this is a very much a, a, a testing build right now. So I imagine these things will get streamlined. And there we go. As you can see, we have a rocket built. And now, interestingly, to launch it, we now hold it. If I can just change the viewpoint there. You see, we hold the rocket and we have to actually go and... Whoops. We actually have to go and launch it ourselves. Uh, this is what the character looks like as well, by the way. Um, again, they've really gone for a, a really innovative approach this time. They've changed the way this looks quite a bit, actually. In fact, I actually designed this myself, uh, this character. You can kind of do these things. There, there's kind of like a flash application they're working on to let you build your own skins for the game. Again, very, very uh, innovative, but very, very, um, very, very early access at the moment. Okay, so we're just going to keep running. To the uh, to our launch pad here, as you can see, the general layout of the space center is the same, but it's just it looks different. I'm you know you can just look at it and think it's not quite the same. For better or worse, I'm not quite sure yet. Again, I must stress this is a definitely a quality assurance build. It's not the final product, but yeah, this is really interesting. You kind of got this nice wooden aesthetic. You never really get to appreciate kind of what these whoops what these rails look like. Uh, when you're actually playing the game, so it's kind of cool to uh, to see that. So here's the launch pad here again, kind of got that very sort of uh, pixelated retro look. I think this style of game might really catch on. I imagine a lot of games will adopt this sort of square style because, you know, it's got a really eye-catching view. Now I'm told that you can't simply launch the rocket at the moment. See, we try and launch it, uh, you can't actually launch it. We have to actually, have bit, uh, we have to actually finish the uh, launch pad because we've not upgraded it yet. And rather than to upgrade buildings now, rather than right clicking, you build them yourself. So you, I've got some pre-built launch pads here. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, right click. There we go. And what we do is we kind of build this square like that. And then in the middle, and see we've got an elevated plinth now. Now, when we place the rocket, ooh, that's a very interesting sound effect. So not quite sure what that means, but... Uh, well, everything looks fine. Oh, wow, look at the sun. So the sun, they've they have kind of stuck, they're really committing to this style. I'm not quite sure if I endorse having the square sun. This game has always been a, a, a simulation 
feel like that might be stretching it a little bit. So, so this is obviously a sandbox save, so I've got, um, I'm still able to have place as many rockets as I want, but we'll just act like this not. So what we're going to do, we're going to board it, so I think, believe you just walk up to it and press, there we go. And there we are. So I guess we're ready to launch in a second, so we'll just make sure, okay, set camera to free, and get our nav ball up as well. Okay, and then I guess it's space to launch, they haven't changed that, so I guess we'll do it. Here we go. Just as night falls, we prepare our rocket for launch. There we go. So they've, re they've changed the sound design by the sounds of things as well, which is another interesting... It's an interesting choice because they just overhauled the sound in the most recent update, so it's... It's unusual that they're going back on it, but you know, I'm not going to question their you know, creative freedom, and by the looks of things, the, the launch pad seems to have been destroyed. Okay, so I'm not quite sure if the ascent profile has been changed yet, so we're just going to go ahead and initiate our gravity turn. Um, let's have a look. So I'm not quite sure how you do it now. Oh, here we go. So we're just initiating our gravity turn. As you can see, the graphics, they do look... They do look different, don't they? Um, and by the looks of things, my character seems to come out of the uh, the ship a little bit. Uh, I'm sure this is fine. Uh, we are still on the ship if we go into IVA view. So I guess this is just a glitch. And as you can see, Kerbin has again been really overhauled. And actually, our gravity turn looks like it's probably a bit too aggressive. I'm not quite sure how we're going to be how we're supposed to be doing this gravity turn because, well, as you can see, the graphics no longer are as informative. I don't know if that's um. I don't know kind of what the motive behind this was, but I'm sure they have a good reason for it. But there's Kerbin there, as you can see. They're they're really sticking to this square concept. It's really it's an interesting move. I I'm not, I don't know why they've decided to go for this kind of voxel based format, but I'm not going to question kind of you know. They I'm sure they know what they're doing. So yes, Jebediah, that is Jebediah. That's his new look. Uh, Jebediah Kerman just co coasting up, and as you can see, we're nearly up into orbit by the looks of things. There we go. Just carrying on running, and here we are, and this is the map screen here. So, as you can see, the, even the map screen has not been spared from this graphics update. So we're going to go ahead to Overworld, which is the development name for Kerbin right now. So we're going to click that, and let's have a look. So we're going to zoom down to there, and we're going to go to the Mun. So, like looks of things, Minmus isn't here actually, which is interesting, again. Very interesting choice. So Minmus clearly has been uh, taken out of this update, and they've actually named the Mun Moon as well, which is interesting. So I think we should just go there. You know, that's kind of a good thing. So we're going to hit go there. No more um, no more planning is required to get to the MUN. They've really streamlined it to make it as accessible as possible. You now basically just get sent there. And um, well, that's it. So there it is, spawning in. So we're going to just use space to slow ourselves down. They've really streamlined it once again. Like I say, they've made this very, very accessible to all gamers now. We only need to hold down space to slow ourselves down. And as you can see, we're going to be touching down. I'm going to try and aim for sort of 1.5 meters per second. There we go. Touched down. And look at that. That is a successful landing if I've ever seen one. So, and look at this. You can see these parts are, are new as well. So they've they've actually changed the look of the, the these parts as well. And interestingly, the rocket itself looked smaller than this lander. So it's interesting how they've kind of taken a more free approach when it comes to designing ships. So we're going to right click to get out. And we're on our EVA. Look at that. So, as you can see, uh, EVAs are now in first person, which is excellent. So, oh yeah, and as you can see, when we jump, you can see the Mun's gravity, or the Moon's gravity, I should say, uh, much, much lower than Kerbin's. So that's interesting. So we can go ahead and take a surface sample. There we go. And, oh, I didn't bring a flag. Let me just quickly go into the console. Now, you can plant uh, flags, but you can have custom flags as well. See, we can actually build a flag like this. There we go. There we go, and there's our flag there. So, well, as you can see, that's, um, there's our flag. So, without further ado, I guess it's time to get back to Kerbin. So now I think what we do, we have to actually build up our launch pad again. Place our rocket. And uh, initiate. So guys, very excited about this update. And as you can see, even the MUN, uh, it looks much cooler. I can see Mainwood, is that a cave over there? That is some really nice ge geographical features. 
uh, to this surface. So there's our countdown. And we are just going to go home. So we don't need to take our lander back with us. Yes, it looks like my suspicions have been confirmed. That lander definitely looks smaller than our rocket, which is really brilliant. Really brilliant uh, choices made by uh, KSP team. So we're just going to go straight for Kerbin. I think, as you can see, it's just there. So we can just uh, fly straight towards it, I believe. Uh, we don't really need to initiate a gravity turn, although I'm not quite sure how you... Uh... They've clearly changed the controls, because Q and E no longer... No longer roll the ship but it's just gonna be a learning curve that we're gonna to have to just get used to so as you can see we've actually done this in a MUN SSTO as well as you can see we didn't deploy a single stage all the way we had a separate lander but we we, we, we kept the rocket as well so the rocket landed as well so it's all kind of been one it's all been one thing really so in future videos um, as you can see it's interestingly again they've actually renamed Jewel to Jupiter uh, Duna has been named Planet.Mars. This is very interesting. They're actually going full simulation with this update. And as you can see, as I'm sure you can see, um, this update is clearly far more realistic than the current Kerbal Space Program. This looks, this makes Kerbal Space Program look embarrassing, to be honest. So we're going to go ahead and land on Kerbin. So we're going to click that in the map view. Uh, there we go. Overworld. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go. So there we are. And as you can see, um, we can use the new. Uh, EVA parachutes that came with the 1.4 update. Oh, that must be a little Easter egg up there. So yeah, as you can see, Kerbals now have the pa their personal parachutes in the uh, the 1.4 update. And we can actually jump out the uh, the rocket and we can actually carry it because with the new update, as you can see, you can build much, much smaller rockets. Those new engines are much more efficient. So we can build you know, really efficient SSTOs to get ourselves to the mun and back. And then to celebrate, we can take another surface sample. There we go. And we can plant a flag to signify, let's just get back into first person. We can plant our flag there. So guys, thank you very much for watching this update video uh, for the latest version of Kerbal Space Program. I think it's going to go uh, available to the public soon. I'm not exactly sure when, but it will be uh, it will be available soon. I believe kind of next week or so. So thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can do so. That's in the description. My Discord is in the description as well and my Patreon page as well. We're going to be doing lots more Let's Plays of this version of the game. I'm, it's a very welcome change, and you know I'm really looking forward to what this game is going to bring to us. So thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.